Finally, let's look at the assumptions we're making uh, when we calculate EOQ. There are a total of five assumptions we have to make for the EOQ to work. Number one, demand rate is constant and known with certainty. Demand rate is constant, meaning the demand is the same across uh, all the time, never go up or down. That's why the demand at the inventory level can go down as a straight line. Otherwise, it will be jagged line. And we know the demand for sure. So this is a very strong assumption. Um, it will never be true in the real life, but we have to make this assumption for us to calculate EOQ. Number two, no constraints are placed on the size of each lot, meaning if we calculate the Q has to be 100,000 units, we do it without any constraints. Of course, in the real life, there will be constraints on how much you can order every time, uh, depending on the capacity of your transportation, warehouse, the money you have, so on and so forth, the capacity of your supplier. But now we just assume there's no such constraint whatsoever on how much we need to order uh, for every lot. Number three, the only two relevant costs are the inventory holding costs and the fixed cost per lot for ordering or setup. Well, in real life, there will be other kinds of costs. One of them is um, uh, what we call obsolescence costs. So if a product is perishable, let's say the milk uh, in the grocery store or um, vegetable, if we order too much uh, from your supplier and you can now sell them, they will go bad. So there's a cost for that, but we're not considering that in our EOQ formula. Number four, decisions for one item can be made independently of decisions for other items. So the EOQ is calculated for each individual item independently. We don't consider what's the impact of one EOQ on the other product. But in actuality, we need to consider them together. Lastly, the lead time is constant and known with certainty. That is how we can time the recipient to receiving of the new uh, order exactly when we use up the last unit of the previous shipment. So this lead time must be known and it never changes. That's how we can time uh, precisely uh, in this way. We're going to see how we can relax some of these uh, assumptions uh, in uh, future uh, calculation. But right now, let's just uh, stick to all these five assumptions. And that should conclude uh, our uh, discussion of EOQ for this lecture.